Hello and welcome to another Arshan XP live webinar. My name is Zoltan Tol. Over here is our resident architect, as Hi always, there. Mr. Ilyes Pa. Today we are going to look at how to use Arshan XP live for uh, architectural projects. Uh, last time we looked at an interior design example, and today we are going to mostly talk about the outside of a building. Lots to do, so let's take a look. As always, I encourage you to ask your questions either below the video or on the right-hand side. Uh, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's somewhere there. Anyway, you have to be logged into YouTube or Gmail in order to comment, but the comments are always valuable. That way, the show can be a little bit more uh, coin size and relevant. Yeah. So uh, what we are going to do today is we are going to investigate how to use Arshan XP Live to turn this building into an immersive model. But for those of you who are new to what Live actually is, Ilesh, can you tell <coughs> the audience in a few words what Live actually signifies? Um, Live is an, is an Arquis tool mm -hmm. that uh, allows you to separate software that you can install and download separately and it is uh, allowing you to create spectacular uh, realistic visuals in literally seconds mm -hmm. as you will see. Uh, it is also bound uh, in a way together with the design system but you can use it separately as well. Uh, but today we will also focus on what sort of uh, advantages you have if you use it together with the, with the design system. But I also uh, will let you know what sort of file formats you can use mm -hmm. if you are using uh, Arsenal XP Live separately with another software. And uh, next week we will have another yes. uh, interesting session about uh, one specific use of, mm -hmm. uh, of Live with, uh, with a specific software, but we will discuss that later. So today, the model that we use today is, it might be, might be familiar for many of you because we use this uh, quite frequently for, for demonstrations, but this time we will use it to demonstrate uh, the abilities of life and trying to give you advices what are important yep. things when you are about to create something that is mostly focused on the exterior, mm -hmm. not the interior. There are similarities, of course. Uh, we would like to show you workflow tips and uh, actual, actual uh, ideas, uh, what you can do with the software and how you can do that. And also some things that we did not discuss previously in previous sessions, uh, then if you are new to this new version uh, of live, then you will find interesting. That's right. But I believe a picture tells <laughs> more than a thousand words. So we have a short video on live actually, what, what live actually is. So until we prepare the model for, for work, uh, let's just look at this uh, slide reel to yeah. be able to see that what live reel, actually yeah. does. So let's take a look.
impressive stuff. So how do you get there? Uh, we have the project, that's where we start yep. uh, in Arch and XP, the design software, but that's not a rendered visual. So yep. how do we get started? Yeah, so, uh, well, the model uh, has, uh, I, I just created a few uh, external views that mm -hmm. we will work with. There is a view from the backyard and there is uh, this close-up frontal view. There is a view that shows the surrounding a bit. We will work on that a little bit as well. Yep. And, uh, and a few views from the interior, but now now we will focus on the exterior first. Well, I, I will actually work on the this view as well because uh, we, I would like to talk about the mm -hmm. lights as well. So we have all the um, all the views previously saved, um, and as I mentioned, the lights, the lamps, lamps we actually created, added a few uh, lamps, spotlights, uh, pendant lamps, and so on into this interior, so that we will be able to you know. Um, Communicate this information mm -hmm. to the to the visual and then change it if you if we want. And as we already are, uh, are inside, uh, let me just start here. But I will show you that also in the external part, we have beautiful textures, materials on the surfaces of this design, uh, which we created here for for the sake of the documentation, of course. Uh, so we have this floor which has this uh, beautiful. Uh, I mean, sorry, this I think is you had this the, the wall, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, we actually have the ceiling as well, which is uh, named as a ceiling material. We have the floor, which is uh, dedicated to be a pocket or mm -hmm. something like this, that with a, with a nice seamless texture. And if I jump to the outside, let's just go to the outdoor close-up view. Here we have this uh, surface, which is actually a bright white wall surface. Uh, and now when I'm highlighting these, these are the the render styles that are important when you would like to uh, create something visual. So if you create a material, if you use a material in Archline, those materials all fall into one category of the visual styles uh, that you can decide whether this is a, a glass surface, a metal surface, chrome surface. And in case of the, um, the pool, it would be important that we actually have a pool here with a surface that is uh, dedicated to be a water surface. Mm -hmm. So this is a special one, as you will see in the in the final uh, visual, because this should live uh, on its own, uh, blown by the wind and so on. So so this will be a little bit special. But other than that, we just we just uh, created the design as 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 um, as the architects, and then uh, I will show you also that at the point when you start creating the visuals, uh, that is. Usually not the not the not the not the very final point when yep. sometimes you cannot even decide whether the design uh, will surely not change or something like that. So I will show you also how to um, kind of uh, realize changes that um, that are are natural mm -hmm. in, in, a, in, in, a, in a design, design. Is in a design system. Uh, well, I I actually have uh, a few things uh, disabled now, this, which I will use for that. But uh, mm -hmm. let's talk about that later. So we have this model with all the views, lights, materials, and an important thing, and an additional important thing, uh, which is the sunlight and the orientation and the north direction of mm -hmm. this building which you can always set up if you go to the uh, file. Well, well, there are several places where you can do that. But one is if you go to the file beam project parameters and then you just set up the location yes. on Google Earth or, or mm -hmm. somewhere else. Now, so this is what you can do. And then let me just go back to the visual here. And then uh, what about yeah, the and, the, and, the, and the simulation. Sorry, I just wanted to show you the, the, the shadow simulation. So you can actually just find a good de good mm -hmm. uh, time uh, during the day and, and say that, OK, this is when I would like to uh, have some sort of uh, shading. And then this is what I will see mm -hmm. uh, in the final uh, visual, which we will create soon in, in life. So this is what uh, is necessary. And then, um, yeah, I actually have an animation as well. Um, which we will use. Uh, I've created an animation path using this uh, animation uh, path, define, define path uh, option. Uh, I'm in command. If I go back to the 2D, uh, here I have this little curve, which is an animation path. Uh, if I go and jump to the create animation, I can just play it for you. It's like nine seconds long and it's just a nice panning video going climbing up a little bit and then just resting mm -hmm. at the end point like this. So this is what I've created. I could have, I could create many more. I just wanted to show you how this is possible in the software, and you could save this as a as a kind of uh, like a drawing result, uh, an animated result. 
uh, and we will also use this for uh, realistic uh, final videos as well. So this is what we have here. And I think... Uh, uh, one question here. So yep. far you talked about visual design, but mm -hmm. the project also entails uh, documentation such as uh, layouts and mm -hmm. sections, elevations. Yep. At what stage you would do that? In, in what kind of environment? Well, uh, now, because this project is actually fully finished, this, uh, this is why we have all the documentation parts as well. But it's not kind of, let's say, it's not deterministic. You can just say that, okay, mm -hmm. at a point, I just would like to create visuals because uh, obviously my clients would like to see how it looks like, what is the surrounding like, how the sun uh, affects my design and so on. Uh, they would like to immerse uh, into your design very likely sooner than you finish the mm -hmm. design. So at this point, it's, it's fully finished, but we could start this uh, this whole thing somewhere in between when we already have the building to show. Yes. But we, for example, in this situation, we don't have the surrounding yet. We mm -hmm. did not get the plan for, from the from the uh, local authorities, so we don't know uh, the exact sizes. But I will jump back to that point later. So now we are at the stage when we already know the building. We actually know the building block itself. This is this is fully our design, and then. Um, then later when changes come I will show you how to uh, update the visual as well with those changes that that come uh, during the design process okay so now we are ready to push this model into live yes. how does that happen so uh, well, when you you initially start making the the first visual of the of the design you can either go with this or this that doesn't matter I will start just for the sake of simplicity I will start with the first option but I could go with this one later when I already have the design I will only use the sync option mm -hmm. because then I would like to sync changes but now what I, I do I just first uh, kind of export this information what I have with all the surfaces all the materials all the objects lights perhaps uh, street lights benches uh, if I would have and, and anything else and then then uh, what happens in the Arch SP live automatically starts uh, loads this information loads the sun settings uh, all the views that I've created with all the materials I will show you that as well and then uh, I already have the the model itself as an interactive uh, visual that I can not just change the visual but I can also create new things add new things mm -hmm. and then later uh, update my changes into those views that I already have so now what happened now that uh, live is quickly jumping from the from one view to another one it's because it is taking the snapshots it's mm -hmm. just taking the photographs so now even at this initial stage where I did not put any uh, for example uh, plants around or cars on the street or anything like that I can already communicate with my clients because those views here at the bottom they are not only views but they are also images on my hard drive so these here these are the png files that are generated at the same time when our client created the, the the model and then later as i develop this model let me just jump to one of these external views so later uh when i develop this into something more dense more de detailed more vivid and and lifelike then i can easily update those uh views mm -hmm. into something more uh realistic so what I have here are the images. Let's say I just sent over my first uh, designs to the to the clients. We discuss the things, and then I start working on what we discussed. How do you set up the resolution for this? Maybe I want to set it in a higher <laughs> resolution. How yes. do I do that? Yes, by default, the, the software's default setting, the software will create in the highest application resolution, which is now what appears on screen. And that is something that you can uh, go and change in the options here. And that is the snapshots and animation. So if you would like to make sure that you create something in full HD, you just select this option and you say that from this point on whatever happens, uh, it will be only mm -hmm. always in full screen, whether this should be a, a snapshot that I create or an animation. Mm -hmm. uh, so you said that the, that the <coughs> views have been imported, right? Yeah. Uh, and you also mentioned at the beginning that you set up the right materials and renders. Yes. Yeah. How do they appear in Archline? Yes. So, uh, well, let's just jump back to this close-up view the, for, the, for the first one. So, so here uh, I mentioned we have wall surfaces uh, and uh, metal surfaces and so on. So what I have here, if I click on this surface, and I select this edit materials, I can tell that this is a wall surface. Mm -hmm. uh, there is somewhere in, uh, inside, if I jump into any of those internal views, I can see that this actually is a ceiling material and I can just change them if I don't like that or if I would like to test how it looks like with a different setting, then I can change it and that the same applies to the pocket. I can change its uh, uh, brightness, uh, reflectivity, uh, roughness and so on. So that, that makes a change automatic in the, in the, in the 3D view. 
So those describe how this, uh, the, how the surfaces of this uh, building look like, and I can also use my own uh, materials from the from the Navigator uh, uh, library here. So if I would like to spice it up a little bit, and I would like to use those 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 dry, lifelike, very very detailed materials here, I just let me just go to the, for example, the f uh, stone flooring, mm -hmm. uh, and I will just apply a nice kind of concrete tile here. So I just click and drag and release it over there. And uh, let's see, now it has some nice texture. That's, mm -hmm. that's, that's a bit better. And then uh, what I would like to use, I just would like to apply this, uh, for example, uh, I mean, sorry, uh, for example, a cobblestone here. And then let's see, let me just zoom into this a little bit. So as you can see, this is really like already like 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 3D, like a 3D surface, but this is actually just a very, very good quality material. How about the water surface in the <clears> background? Can you, I mean, the backyard, uh, you yeah. mentioned that you defined a water uh, render style, but how do you, what yes. do you see of that now? Yes, well, now what we have here is this pool with the, with the flowing water on top of mm -hmm. it. It's because the software understood that I told in the design system that this should be water, so it should uh, be blown by the wind. Now it's a default water. If you like it, you can keep it. If you don't like, or just would like to test it with another one, then you can go to the water library. Still, I'm in the navigator in the materials page and I just go to the water and I test it whether this would look better with clean water or a pool water or something a little bit deeper. So I just mm -hmm. test it and when Let's I think find the one that you like, say, okay, this is okay, then I just keep it. So, and the same applies for these, uh, for these metals. For example, now this metal is, is nearly perfect. I like how it reflects everything. How about but, the things um, in the background? It's the no, for example, I forgot about this. I can go and I could use the metal uh, materials here from metal library and I can say that, okay, this is also uh, something like a chrome material. Now, instead of changing uh, materials uh, one by one, I can actually just undo this and tell the software that, okay, let's change all instances. So if I used this white material with the same name anywhere else, then it should change everywhere. Mm -hmm. So it's 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 a little bit faster. Like that the same applies for example for this material here. And of course for the for the glazing here. If I just would like to test uh, what it would look like with an acrylic glass mm -hmm. or a blue tint glass or for example a stripe glass or something like that I can test it and if I like it this better or this better I can just say okay let's let's go with this one because I think this will fit much better than the previous one what about lights you mentioned that you have specified a few lamps and yep. how do you ex how do you have access to their lighting properties well the lights those are let's just start from this from the interior first because mm -hmm. I told you that those are the, these uh, nice pendant lamps and so on mm -hmm. and then I will go to the outside because I would like to continue uh, working over there so now uh, on top of this uh, panel here you can find the edit lamps and lights if you if you click here you will the software reveals all the lights uh, and then you can just uh, select any of those. Let me just focus on to this one, for example. Yes. So if I select, this actually has two light sources. So if I just would like to, I can turn uh, one, com um, one component uh, on or off, and then I can select the, uh, the other one. And if I would like to, I can just turn it on, change how bright it is, how, how powerful it is. And I can also change this to be a real light. And then in that case, as you can see, it is also costing uh, mm -hmm. shadows in the surrounding. Now, the reason why it's important, now this helper all or uh, real light is that, now this is more realistic, but it is also most, more costly for the software. So, um, live is lightning fast. If you can, as you can see, whatever you do changes in, uh, instantly and happens instantly. Even when I update the image, it will take only one second and I have the same good quality image at the end. But uh, if I have too many of these light sources that really cost shadows then the software has to calculate more so the idea here is that if i can give you a good advice on this the software will determine all light sources help a light because yes. it's easier to handle but you should go around and check whether you would like to determine that this light source and that light source and that light source a few of them are real costing uh, real shadow costers uh, because in that case, the uh, model, the, the visual will be more realistic, but still won't use cast shadows everywhere, which would slow down the work. So, so just focus on the most most important lights and turn them turn them into uh, real shadow casters, but not all of them. Okay. How about the sunlight? 
Uh, well, just one another thing I wanted to highlight here that you can even change mm -hmm. the, the the tone of the oh, okay. of the light. So as you well. can fine tune that. But this yeah. this information is all coming from Marshline. Yes, uh, yes, yes. Uh, regarding mm -hmm. the sunlight, uh, how does the software know where the north direction is? Well, this came from the uh, so the so the north direction came from the mm -hmm. um, from the design system. But if you are using this model with an external source, which is not Archline but some di another different uh, design system, and you used any of those import file formats that Live itself can import individually, then you have the option to change the north direction here, mm -hmm. and you can also at any time, even uh, whatever the source is, you can change the uh, the, the the sun direction. Uh, I mean, based on the uh, location, date, and time. Mm -hmm. Now, this is an important, an, an interesting thing here because you can actually uh, create two different versions of one view because these settings that I set up here, those are view dependent. I mean. I if I go to the... You can customize um, what happens in a certain view, but that would have no effect on the <coughs> other views. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, let, let me show you two things that, that makes you understand what is view dependent and what is not. Mm -hmm. Let me just go here. And, well, first things first, I would like to change the grass texture everywhere. Yes. So what I do, I go to find something nice uh, that in the uh, environment. Or you could be using the search bar at the top. If you yeah, yeah, I could, I could just um, search grass or something like that. Uh, so uh, this is what I would like to use. I apply it onto this surface and the, the reason uh, because uh, this option is on, it will change everywhere. So the same applies mm -hmm. if I change, for example, the asphalt material uh, and so on. So this is what happens. Now um, let me just undo that because I did not want to change it over there. So I just change just it only over here. No, I think yeah. this looks better. So, so this is what I do. I also, uh, let me just quickly finish that to make it uh, in a second nice and finish that this here should be concrete. Uh, I mean, sorry, this, this should be cobblestone. I use cobblestone over there. So yeah. let's just make them equal uh, like this with this one and this one. Okay, mm -hmm. so that, that's, that's uh, a bit better. I have nice grass and I also use something of, um, of a concrete material over here on this surface and for example on this surface that's nice Go and clean mm -hmm. so now i've finished so everything that i've changed it has an effect on all of my views if i go here everything is the same if i go here everything is the same so this is view independent what i change as a material as a as a as a um, so-called uh, geometrical details if i when i add the details which i would do soon those happen everywhere. But and what are view dependent? But things? but when I go to this one and I say, well, sorry, let me just uh, click create a clone of this view. So I would like to create one another. Uh, this uh, this I will uh, name as night night view. Okay, so those uh, those those both represent the same point of view with the same materials. But if I go here and I change the, for example, let me just change the date as well. Let me just change the time as well. Now if I go back here, I have the night view and I have the outdoor view both represents the same model but the but the location i mean the uh, date and time is uh, dependent on the on the view mm -hmm. and now i have an option if i would like to turn all my views into night view then i can go to the edit sunlight and use this to kind of copy paste the same setting to all of my views this would happen like this I say, if i say yes then all my views would turn into a night view i'm thinking um, of another method what about you you take uh, you always <laughs> use the best lighting for that particular particular view. How do you yep. do that? For example, if you if you look at the building from from the front <laughs> or from the back, you don't want this to be shadowed. But if yeah. you move the move the sunlight, then on the other side that will be shadows, right? Yep. So you don't want either of that. You want both sides to be equally lit. How yep. do you do that? Yeah, you can you can fix it the same same exact way. So you just find a view that you would like to uh, spice up, mm -hmm. and you say that well, this would be much better somewhere in the afternoon like this. And then that's it, it's already done. You already have this view uh, with this setting and you still have the front of you, for example, this one at the original location. See, well actually if I move my mouse over this view, I see the name and there is the date and time. Ah. It's 11 o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. And the other one is actually already somewhere in the afternoon. I cannot see the changes represented yet on this tiny thumbnail, but it's only because I need to update the view and then everything is updated here as well and on the image as well. And I, later I will show you when we have a lot of things changed, how to, you can update all of these views. Uh, can we start boosting the model with some more objects, yeah. maybe foliage? <laughs> Uh, for an architectural model, it's very important to, to sort of 
uh, represent the environment <laughs> with trees and bushes and other things to make it a bit more lifelike. So okay, well, how do you do that? Let, let me start with, for example, uh, a car and a human. Uh, let's, uh, let's just speak because actually this is the building which we are focusing yes. on. The rest is just a kind of a representative thing. So I will just start detailing this part, but mm -hmm. later we will finish the rest. Yeah, you could copy so when I things. use, I will use this hatchback car here. I just select it, and now, of course, you can use this these options to move, rotate, and and rescale the object. And the same applies for the um, one, two, three uh, shortcuts on the keyboard. Mm -hmm. So, if you would like to refine the position, you would like to rotate the uh, model. It's it's a very easy thing to do. You can even uh, bend it a little bit if it's um, something like that. If you would like to do that, and then. Um, you can add a uh, human figure from the libraries. Let me just add uh, Fabian here, for example, with mm -hmm. her kid. And let's just jump into the uh, interior. And actually here, I have a living room part, which we discussed already here, mm -hmm. this one. And let's just play Sophia. Now we actually have, we have an animated Sophia here, so I will put her here. Oh, so, so she's moving. So yeah, it's, she's actually living with the environment. She's just, you know, um, stepping from yes. one like she's very judgmental one. because there's nothing in the room yeah so it's, it's still, it. still so how about we add some some more foliage or some more uh, yeah so uh, well this is here uh, with this detail and now let me just add foliage you, you told me that well there, there's actually two ways one is if you would like to decorate like very specific decoration you would like to add you would like to add a few plants especially a mm -hmm. few bushes or something like that then you can just select them here or you can go to the trees library and you can say that well this here which is uh, by the way they are represented with the tiny human figure so you can see uh, what the size will be so you can just uh, click and drag and release and then well that, that that's it over there and again, here you can just enable this option. And in that case, when you have a selected item, you don't need to click and drag, click and drag always. You just you know click into the place where you would like to place it. And so, so that's how you do it. And then I will just add one uh, Sakura, I mean, perhaps a smaller one, like this one over here. And then I will just add the nice populace over here, for example. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, uh, this is a point where uh, where I perhaps would like to add some grass uh, to the to the details. Hopefully, and then, you don't have to add them by. Well, the, no, the, no, 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 no. Every no, single blade has to be positioned. Well, I, I could if I want, but uh, for example, like 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 these leaves, scattered leaves, I just mm -hmm. would like to place them something like this, but. Uh, if I would like to place a large bunch of things, uh, like like trillions of uh, of uh, grass uh, grass uh, leaves, then I would use something that we call the foliage painter. So I go here, and the default uh, brush we actually have uh, four default brushes. You can customize these brushes. So whatever you would like to, you can select here, and you can go with any of those. So if I use the, the default grass field. And then what I do, I just, let me just turn the camera over a little bit. So I just see, I just click and drag and just paint this area, like spray the area with this uh, dense and actually living, uh, moving um, grass surface. We also have a cut grass. So if I would use that, it would be more um, and less wild. Well like, uh, but uh, I like but this one. Anyway, uh, let's what just... happens if, you, if you're not coloring within the lines, if you know what I mean? What happens if you overextend and you... Okay, so let, let, let me just do that here, for example. I, I would like to spray a larger area, like this one. And then, well, if I do that, it's easier to make a mistake. Like, see, I'm not too good at that with this size of brush, but I can actually work faster. So uh, what I do now, I just quickly spray this area with, with the grass and then I use the eraser. I fine tune the brush size and I say, okay, so here I should erase so that as well. And so on also here and I can just click here and here. So I just, yeah, I just trim it back. Also the same thing happens if I would like to add a few bushes like here and over there. Maybe with some trees. Uh, how can you add things <laughs> to this uh, palette? Of, of well, if I would like to, uh, what I could do, I uh, this is actually how this small grove was created. So the small grove is consisting of uh, one type of tree, grass and, and uh, bog myrtle bush. So if I would like to change this, for example, I can remove this from here and I could say that, well, instead of that one, I would like to use something like this acacia. 
So I just click and drag, paste mm -hmm. it over here, and then I have the ratio. The ratio decides how many uh, of those I would like to see. So if I spray now, let's just uh, spray this area with, the, with that one. See, sometimes a tree also also ah, appears. Okay. So you predefine not only the content, but also the frequency yeah. of the elements. Yeah, yeah. So, so that happens. So I just do the same thing here. A few trees appear over there and so on and I can actually add many more trees mm -hmm. so I just I can just uh, create a small grove with a completely different content and uh, the same applies for the trees. Mm -hmm. Before we add further details uh, let's say that this is the time when the client came back to us saying that uh, he wants to have some kind of changes in the plan. Yeah. How do you synchronize those changes with live? Because you don't want to lose what you have already created right? No. So you want to go back to the design software do, the f do a few things but these changes what you have done, uh, you want to keep them. Yeah. So how do you synchronize the changes? Okay, so now that I have those changes appearing here, um, that came the, the situation, I jump back to, to, to Arshline, uh, which is this application, and then, well, we discussed uh, with the local authorities that here are the 3D models, very simple models that you can just paste here and then you can just of the surrounding buildings. The, the surrounding buildings. So I've got that. Uh, or, or sometimes, well, in this in this specific situation, we actually use the tools of the software, uh, which you can find in the building terrain, and we have something like building volume. You can you can, you can sketch buildings. So whatever the source was, uh, let me just go outside with to the surrounding included. Mm -hmm. So the change will be more obvious this way. Uh, I actually have this layer called surrounding buildings. This is where I just put those things. This is it. So now I have a relatively detailed surrounding. So now I would like to add this uh, to my existing uh, design, which uh, already I invested a lot of work yes. into. So now I could do, um, because I already uh, started working it, uh, I could just go into the view, renderings and sync. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but instead of that, I use this, use its counter twin, which is the same command, just but within the, live. within live, within live, you can find the same exact command. So it, it, if you go here and you use live sync, this is identical, this is the same command. If you click here and the software updates the changes, see now we are surrounded with those buildings. So now um, all the changes that I made during how long that took, uh, the software understands that when the same project where I started from and the same uh, live project are both opened um, at any time, it understands the changes. So it will sync the changes and it was lightning fast because it is communicating only the changes. So whatever else uh, was already there, the software did not push it uh, as a second copy or something like that. So only the changes appeared here. What you did now is that you enable the visibility of things <coughs> you have already created before. Yeah. But do you, can you show us an example where you actually create something in, in <coughs> and then you yeah, synchronize okay. the, the changes just so that we can see an example for that too. Okay, so for that, we can use this view, which is for the backyard um, uh, here, this one. So here in the backyard, we have this pool, uh, which will be very simple to edit for me because it is actually a nice uh, slab with another slab here. Sometimes you ask, well, sometimes the viewers ask how I create water into a pool. Mm -hmm. It's a very simple surface. You don't need to have a, a real uh, water volume inside it. You just need a flat surface. And in Ashline, one of the easiest ways to create uh, something like that is a slab. So I just actually use the slab here and here. Actually, I will reveal this in Ashline. So you can see that here. Uh, let me just jump back to the same view, uh, which is the backyard view. Okay, so uh, this is a slab and that is a slab. Uh, now let me just uh, try to find those in the 2D. There is a nice command here show on floor plan. Okay, that's it over there. I actually uh, created an, uh, a helper uh, guideline over there, but I will just, what I do now, I will just uh, use this slab counter and I just move its node nodes to somewhere uh, into those corner points. I don't want to be very, very mm -hmm. specific Much or I could erase less. the existing one and create a new one. I just would like to show you that whatever you do, however you do that, you end up with a different result, uh, which is reflected in the 2D. Let me just square this up. Let and the point say is that, that what you're showing now is that yeah. even if you uh, change something in the model as far as geometry is going, you can synchronize those kind of changes. So we want to give you an example for that too. 
uh, less to avoid that you would think that only material changes could be synchronized, which any kind of things you, you do in, in Einstein, when it comes to geometry, you can synchronize those things. And the point is that uh, in the beginning, you remember, it took a while to import the model because it is a heavy model with many, many surfaces. But when we are synchronizing it, it happens instantaneously. So mm -hmm. you don't have to wait for that synchronization over and over again. You just push a button and it synchronizes. Because we, so whenever you are doing a design, it happens that you have to go back to Arshline and do a few things and then synchronize the changes because realistically, that's how a design process is. But this is a one directional exchange. So when you create something in Archline, you can synchronize those changes with, uh, with live, but it's, it's not really going back. So this means that if you want to create something which you want to document as well, then you better do those things in Archline. And then sync the changes. And then sync the changes, because then you can create the layouts that you see in the bottom right. Uh, yeah. We are going to return to that topic a little bit later. So now we have a, d a changed version of the project. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it is sketch something in real time. So how do you push the changes into live? Well, that's that's the same exact way. You just either use this option mm -hmm. or you use it from within live. And the reason I'm using it from live because it will be more obvious. I don't uh, have to switch Very quick question. You already applied a different material to the water surface. Do yeah. you have to do that again or? Well, let's see. If I just use this, if I use live sync, see now the changes are appeared mm -hmm. and because I actually created a completely new slab Yes. If I would have changed the original slab, just as I did with this one, mm -hmm, exactly. uh, then the software would keep the changes. But now because I, I created a completely new slab and I erased the old one, so my changes that I applied was mm -hmm. uh, were applied to the old one, now my changes were lost. But if I change something, instead of erasing and recreating a new one, that is a difference. So, so this is what happened. Don't forget that in the view thumbnails, you can see that it's, we, or, we still have the old round, yeah. uh, round uh, swimming pool. So if you want to update that, you would have to do that manually. Unless you do that, the software would keep that view. Well, actually, uh, now I can show you because we have a lot of changes happened over, yep. the, over here. So most of these views are already outdated. I don't see the car here and so on. So if you would like to, you can also use this option here to update all the views at one single, mm -hmm. single go. If you say yes, then now the software goes through all of your images and just recreates all, this, all the shots. And if an image is at night time or a bit different, yeah, it, it, uh, keeps the sun it will sun keep position. the same setting. Yeah, the sun, sun, sun uh, position. So now we have all those beautiful views as updated images here on our desk yes. with, the, with the different uh, settings of the scenery. Now that we, we talked about the night image, uh, maybe that would be a good pretext to show you effects, how they work in our shine live. You I'm mean the of fire uh, and this yeah. kind of things? Yes, yes, yes. So let's just let's just go here, and I will. Just, let me just change the the, the, the settings for to now, so that we can see uh, like this, and then I will go back to the to the night setting. So what I do now, I just go here and I try to find something. I know, as a fact, I know we have something called fireplace. Mm -hmm. So I just uh, use this modern fireplace. I put it here. Uh, let me just turn it around a bit like that and then I just go and search for chairs we have quite a few of those like nice beautiful detailed chairs like this one here uh, can you actually show uh, how to copy elements uh, yeah you could you could you know drag and drop them but you can also copy them yeah, the same can. things can be used here I can I can yeah so what I do now I just uh, align it a bit and then now what I do I just control C control copy and then mm -hmm. I just hover my mouse over here because that's where I would like to spawn it I would like to place it over there so I just control V paste it and then you know I could just paste 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 well, as many copies as I want it's then what I shares. yeah then and then what I do I just you know refine it and if I would like to I can also find a nice fire I will go with the medium size I think that will be enough no oh, it's a a bit wild, so let's just go with this one. Yeah, By the way, uh, Ilish is using Control Z if he wants to undo. Yeah, things. yeah, yeah. So you can instead of uh, com com uh, continuously keep, keep clicking here, you can use Control Z uh, to undo mm -hmm. changes. So this is what happened, and also uh, so so you keep developing these things and you you leave it off, and then well next day if there are some changes, you just both open the the changes in in, in Arch line. You open the existing design and then you sync the changes. Mm -hmm. So this is how you react to those changes that happen. I either on, online, let's say, like on the run, or just uh, when you did something in the night time and then you just would like to uh, spice it up a little bit, then you can just change it later on. Uh, and then can, you can, can just we record an extra this. view? Because I think we haven't, we, we did that before, just a reminder. Let's make a, a view of this.
Yeah. Uh, so like, it's not like that spectacular, a, but that's like a, a like a completely new view. Yeah, like a completely I mean, new one. Yeah. Okay. So if I select this one like that, and then I just go to this a snapshot view, this is how I add the new mm -hmm. one. So I can just say that this is the uh, fireplace view. Another thing I'm, I'm thinking about is that we learned how to synchronize the changes from Archline, but what happens if you want to just pick one object <laughs> or, or material from Archline? You don't want to synchronize the whole model, mm -hmm. you just want to get one particular thing from Archline. How do you do that? Well, for that one, what I will do, I will just uh, use this area here. I would like to place, um, so it's a, it's a, it's a bench. Mm -hmm. So, uh, well, in Archline, just as we did before, I could uh, go into the design system, find uh, anything that is the best to place that object, find the object itself, it's a bench that I would like to place here and, and just place it over here and then just push the sync button and sync, sync the changes. Yes, you could do that. Or that would that would be uh, identical to what I did before. Uh, but I also would like to show you what you can do if you just would like to send over an object from this uh, object library to live, so that later at any time you can just pick it up and just place it into any of your designs. Mm -hmm. So in that case, you click here and you say that you would like to uh, export this object to live. I believe I already did that, so I won't send it over again because I think it is already here. So if I did that before, then in the navigator, in the object library, I will find something called the uh, imported object, this one. So here, as you see, I already did that. So uh, I, it appears automatically, yeah. instantaneously, and then you can just click and drag and you can use it as any other objects. Now, but the Here funny comes, thing is that yeah. uh, that now we have we are using the object with its materials as yeah. as it came fr uh, from another software. Now we actually downloaded this from the warehouse yeah. in in uh, our exactly. Shop. Can you change the materials? And if you have done that, how can you save it back to life? So next <laughs> time when you're using it, it's already loading up with the changed materials. So how do you do that? Well, for, for any uh, things that are appearing here and then you, that you can select uh, in live, you can uh, customize it and you can resave it the way I show you now. So if I would like to make another version of this one, I just uh, customize it. Let me just add, so let's, this will be bright white. Let's just go with the basic white material. And this will be something of a different wood. Like Let's just go with mahogany. That's, oh, well, I think this looks cool. But let's just test another. Uh, oh, maybe this, this is, is much better. better. Yes. Okay, so let's just keep this. So, well, from this point on, I would like to this. Uh, I would like to have this as an, uh, a ready-made object that I can just use mm -hmm. like this instead of you know just control copy and control paste because for that I need this project. I don't want to use it only in this project. I but would like to use, use it in, in different library, ones. Yeah. Right? So, uh, if I would like to save this back into the navigator's library. All I need to do is, I actually did that before, I created a new new folder with this one, create a new folder, and I named it My Objects. So if I double click here, you can see that there's a few uh, objects that I already imported, uh, and uh, anyways, I just uh, added. So now what I would like to, I just select this one, and I can actually select multiple things together, uh, but I just would like to save this now. And then I click here, create a new item, and it is automatically added to the library. And let me just name it like, what was this? Um, what, what was the material? It was like. Oh, it was mahogany. Mahogany, for example. Okay, so let's say Probably. it's a mahogany. Um, I think an A is missing, but. Anyway, so this will be a mahogany bench. Mm -hmm. uh, bench. Like okay, so that. the point so, is that from now on, that would be part of your library. Yeah. So if you open up a next project, a clean one even, you can use it with this material definition. Yeah, and I can easily use it just the same way. If I just click here and I just would like to continuously place a few copies here and here and here, then I can just easily work with that. So from mm -hmm. this point on, it appears in any of my projects and I can just use it as, as a built-in library item. Before we start uh, creating exports, uh, namely images, yep. uh, mm -hmm. let's, let's discuss uh, camera effects because mm -hmm. that's again something But whenever you are doing a rendering, you always want to do some after work, right? You want to define the, the field of view, depth of field probably, you want to maybe desaturize the, the colors so you have a nice black and white effect. So how do you yep. do that? 
let me add something that is closer to us so I can represent this change Maybe a bit some better. Maybe large trees like so you a, can see the, the yeah, barks. Like a, um, or at least a medium sized tree or something like this appearing mm -hmm. over here for example. It's too close, so like, like something like this. Mm -hmm. So uh, if I would like to, I can change the, uh, the camera effects. And the camera effects appear here. If you just enable this, you can change the field of view how much the camera sees from that point of view. So I'm not changing, I'm not zooming actually. Uh, I'm not moving the camera, I'm just changing the, I'm in the same spot and I'm just changing how much the camera sees. So I can just change this. I can change the exposure uh, to change how much light the okay. camera gets. You can compensate for that, that's good. Yeah, uh, I, call, I can also change the brightness, contrast, saturation. I can just easily quickly create a dark tone. I mean the black and white uh, grayscale tone of, uh, of an image or kind of uh, like a desaturated but a little bit colored version of that. So this is how I, how it goes. I can change the white balance. So if I would like to, I can just, let me just turn the camera over like this. This is much better. So I just change the white balance to make it a little bit more summer-like. So it is becoming yes. warmer, if you can mm -hmm. see. The, if I make it extreme, it is a little bit like, like a CP effect. But yeah, it's a bit vintage. But if I just increase a tiny bit, I can see that, well, this is good. This, this, is, this is nice. It, I can understand this is, a, this is a summertime image. And I can also turn on the depth of field which now makes the whole thing blurry because now the camera focus is close somewhere to the tree. Uh, but I can just say that, okay, with this one, I would like to focus on the car. So now everything here closer to the camera is a bit blurry. Yeah, we will save that, thank you. Uh, and I can also change the, the strength. Uh, if I can make it a little bit more, how to say, like obvious that now, now everything is very, very blurry cl close to the camera yes. and everything that is far can is I not so much. Can I ask you to close the navigator for a second? Yeah, so sorry. That we can... Yeah, like, like that. Yeah. Oh, now we can see that. So it is, it is very blurry. Even if I go closer, it will be very, very, very blurry. I can, I, I can see it's a tree, but it's not, not mm -hmm. an important point of the design. Uh, if I just disable it and, dis and enable, you can see the changes. So you can just and pick what to focus on, but can you make it uh, automatic? Yeah, yeah, with this one. So if I don't want to deal with that and I just would like to apply all these changes to all of my views, I just use the same button here. It's just a little bit smaller, but it's for the same effect. I can, I can update all my views with the same settings and say, yes, okay, apply this to all of my views. So if I navigate to the backyard view, here in the backyard, I also have the uh, the depth of field effect. If, if I zoom out a little bit, I can see that the and that I see the, the wall tone. is the wall yes. is a bit blurry. So uh, as as I develop this design a little bit further, if I go into the uh, interior, like to for example to this view or something like that, I can see that the the same effects, the same um, tones and and everything mm -hmm. is applied. So again, the camera properties are. Uh, camera dependent so you can uh, make them appear the same whole way everywhere or you can just say that well here maybe it's a bit too uh, too warm so let me just cool it off a little bit and change its saturation and change the exposure it's a bit too much so it is changed here but not on the rest of the views I see what about the animation we already created an animation path yeah so we could retrieve that and also we can make another animation path right yeah yeah for that again if you go to the animation uh, that you already have you just uh, go to the animation uh, tray here and you just start playing the anime I only created one so that's why uh, there is only one appearing so if I start playing that now it's exactly the same path, the exactly the same content, mm -hmm. but with the rest that I have added. And then... How can if, you record another one? Well, if I like this, I can already save this uh, into a video file. It takes two or three minutes maximum in full HD to generate this video. And then I have this as a video file. But if I would like to add a new uh, view, like, uh, for example, I, I used to create uh, a panning video like this, somewhere here, like like this, that is a new animation that is actually just climbing a little bit. It's nothing, mm -hmm. nothing fancy, just so a little bit of movement. Climb and, and tilt a bit, a little bit, looking downwards. So, so I added the first keyframe mm -hmm. and then I just uh, move my camera to the new position, tilt it a little bit, perhaps also turn it a little bit, and, but not too much. And then I just add the new keyframe. So now it's a one second video, it will be very, very fast. So I just change it to just, let's say it's perhaps five, five seconds would be nice. And then I just got jump back to the beginning and let's just start playing that. So this is how it looks like. It looks very good. Especially so, because you see that things are moving. That's yeah, yeah, and this is also something that I could give uh, as a good advice. Don't, don't create 
one single shot large videos that you mm -hmm. walk through the whole building or something like that because first things first that would not be so much interesting for the viewer yeah, that's and right. another thing is that it is easier to create mistakes so instead of creating large uh, i don't know one minute shots when you when you walk around the whole building you just create short shots like this animation one two three you can even name them like uh it's like it, let me just name this as climbing uh, can you show us how to stitch the animations together and then yeah and then what you do is that you just uh stitch them together as one single sequence you can even add that at the transition sorry before you do that you see that on the left hand side there's some empty space you don't yeah. want to see that so can you override the starting position yep. looking a little bit to the right yes so, yes so if you find that this is mm -hmm. not the best one you just yeah, Change exactly. That's, like that's that. what I would do. And then you update it. So mm -hmm. it's the same exact idea. Like you, you update the, the, the keyframes. And from this point on, uh, if you play this, I actually enable the handler sequence transitions. So I don't even need to use, an, uh, well, I need to fix this, the starting. But as you can see, yes. it is moving. Perfect. And then when it comes to the uh, end of the first uh, session, it turns into oh, the following specified. one and then and so on and so on. So w if I would push this button here, then now I could create the, the, the long video what, with, with shot one, shot two, shot three into one single mm -hmm. video file. Uh, one question from my side. <laughs> now yeah. that the design process is done, we have a bunch of views. Is it possible to go back to Archline? We have a, we have a layout over there yep. and add one of the views that we created onto the layout. Yes, because these are image files. So mm -hmm. if you go to the uh, library of the snapshots and you would like to add any of these, these are images on your hard drive. So yes. onto your layout, uh, you can paste. Uh, it's actually this, have a this one, this, this here. Yes. Yeah. So here you can insert any of those mm -hmm. uh, image files. So it's a very, very simple uh, thing to do. And just as a final touch, let me just show you that. So, okay, this is where we got to uh, now, but a little bit, a little bit more of work we actually uh, created uh, another version of this yes. one, and I have a video um, of that, so we can yeah. we can view it uh, until it loads. I can show yeah. you uh, how the end result should look yeah. like. So, this is already a furnished, a much more furnished work. Obviously, it would take more time to elaborate it the way you see on the screen. But the point is that there was no after work in this, except when we uh, put the sec sequences together. All this was created in Arch and XP Live. So. The point is that, as we have seen uh, this uh, Tuesday, two days ago, you can use the software for interior design projects as well and also for architectural rendering. So the idea here is that to use life to its advantage, add the number of surfaces, add that depth that you need or movement that you need to, to bring your design to life. Uh, in a second, we are going to see the uh, project in live as well. So we can compare and see how much happens since we uh, since you created yeah. this project. So, so that's that's the mm -hmm. project itself with uh, the details that you saw on the video. And here I wanted to show you one trick because something, uh, from time to time we've mm -hmm. got this question how we can handle things appearing in the far. So obviously you have the option to paint the area with trees, but yes. sometimes uh, you can combine things that are very, very far with uh, detailed mm -hmm. uh, things that are closer to you by adding something. So let me just go and find a view, for example, from here. And if I just zoom to here, I can, yeah, see I can still see that there are, there's some sort of mm -hmm. emptiness. So for this, I actually have an object in uh, in Archline which I already exported. Uh, let me just let me show you that. So I just uh, used um, warehouse background. warehouse to search for this simple term background. Yeah, I should spell it correct. So uh, yeah, no, okay. So back ground like that mm -hmm. so i just found this one which is a nice curvy plate uh with it's pretty a huge it's with, yeah, more it's, than 100 meters yeah, as you can see it's very large so it actually has a, a transparent like it's a, it's like a, a curvy paper cut mm -hmm. it's a it's a transparent material on it uh, it's actually not too m much detail, so it's a, it's if you zoom into it, it's a little bit blurry, but that's fine because it will do its purpose very well if you we use it in live in a far uh, distant uh, part of this project. So I just what I do, let me just zoom out a little bit, and then I will just find this because I already saved it. I believe it's in my objects library. This one, so I just imported it from uh, from Archline. The same exact way I did with the mahogany bunch. So I just uh, click and drag, release it over here. See now it's over there. Let me just uh, it's 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 bent like this, and I would like to turn it around. So I just use the this one. Nice, cool. That's fine. And then what I do, I just 
push it back to the ground like this. So it's a realistic spicing up detail like, like that. I see, so you can so add some more depth with the, yeah, with the like, backgrounds. Like that. And so it's even if I just look around like this, I can still see details mm -hmm. over there, but I didn't have to model it. So if you, you, there's a bunch of things like this, and also you can find simpler building models that you can you just scatter around yes. and, and just place them around. So this is a nice and cool way to spice your model up, and it will work very well from, uh, from interior views as well, and also in the surrounding, because now everything is very well detailed. Uh, we have a lot of user questions, so yeah. uh, okay. just, let's just go, uh, let's just jump back in uh, question time. Uh, first one, is there a way to force the objects from the library onto a surface, uh, for example, to the ground? I think that when you are dragging and dropping elements, they are going to find the closest uh, flat surface, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when you, uh, when you place items, like let me just place this, uh, this bench again. So if I, if I click and drag it over this surface, it will snap to that surface mm -hmm. perfectly. Now, obviously, when you move it, you can move it freely. But when you place it, uh, then it will place it will be placed onto the surface uh, where you actually clicked. Perfect. Next one uh, in Unshine XP. Do you need to save any changes before using the live sync? No, uh, though it's uh, it's recommended, but you don't have to. Mm -hmm. Now, the reason why it's recommended is because uh, uh, let's imagine that you make some changes, you sync those changes back to live, and then you forget to save your project. Now, in that case, you close them both, and the next time you open up uh, the uh, the project, and you open up the live project as well, and you push the sync button, you will lose everything that is that is not there because the software will think that you erased them because simply you did not save them. So yes, it is recommended to save, but it's not 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 mandatory. Also, let's say, uh, if I'm not using Ocean XP, how do I import files into Live? If you do not use uh, the design system, then a very simple way to import files is that you can go to, and you have two options. You can go to, if you already have something existing, you can go to import, and then you can choose these two and a soon to be uh, announced new file format, uh, which will be the SketchUp file format. This will be, uh, we will uh, mm -hmm. discuss uh, next Tuesday, yes, perhaps uh, Wednesday. Wednesday, sorry, next next Wednesday. Stay we will talk tuned about for this the is, announcement. Yeah, if you're interested in that, if you're a SketchUp user, if you will, if you would like to use SketchUp files, you should watch our following presentation as well. So OBJ, FBX, and SKP files are uh, supported, and then uh, also you can start your uh, project by importing a new one. If you go to the starting screen. Uh, then uh, what you can do, you can uh, start a project by an imported mm -hmm. uh, object as well. So that those are those are your options. Another question uh, on forcing objects on the ground. If a car is placed on a cambered surface, will the car follow the camber? Uh, I think you would have to tilt the elements. Yeah, it it won't auto align itself to the mm -hmm. ramp, for example. No. It will be placed with its. Uh, we call it. Uh, uh, like a reference point. So the reference point will be aligned with the surface, but it won't auto tilt. So yes. you need to tilt it. Yeah. Yes. Uh, another question. Uh, where can I learn the software? How can I learn it? Well, there are several options. The, the most obvious one is if you go here and you just push this button, then it will directly lead you to this page, which is, by the way, the online help of the 2019 and the 2020 and the rest yep. of, the, of the versions. If you just uh, scroll down, you will see these are very well focused, detailed option, these detailed um, helping videos, only one or two minutes or maximum three, focusing on only one command. So it is very easy to jump in and learn these yes. things, how they work. Yes. Uh, another question. Uh System requirements. Can you show us where we yeah. can find? Yeah. Uh, well, these are the system requirements here and here. Uh, I also would like to show you that something that I we discussed last time. Uh, if you're watching this video and you see this first, uh, it's an important thing that the system requirements of uh, Archline XP Live and the design system are a bit different. Uh, and most importantly, the GPU is, is is more important for live because everything happens instantaneously on your graphics card. So for that reason, we actually detailed this a little bit more. It is a little bit higher. Uh, I mean, the, the, the basic recommendations, the, you know, the the moderate design, this is like the minimal uh, recommendations. Mm -hmm. This is the, uh, the, the so-called G3D mark should be at least 3000. I will explain you what that means. And if you use uh, complex designs, then it should be at least 8,000. So now, as a fact, I know that, for example, at home, I have a GTX 20 uh, or, or 1660. Mm -hmm. So I just uh, go to this website. This is actually a link here. You just go to the Passmark software website, and then you just type your uh, GPU's type. So this is GTX 1660. 
Uh, for example, that's the model you have. Yeah, I and you want to check out if if that uh, checks the and the box. Find it. So mm -hmm. so now the first uh, column is the G3D mark. So I can see that even if I have even if I have the the the, the, the lowest uh, ability. I, it is it is still good for the uh, recommended size, but uh, perhaps I have this one. So I I don't remember. It's just uh, I just I just uh, Google it here and just find it here, and it and it helps me finding uh, how good it is. And uh, well, I always recommend if you are a newcomer and you would like to try and test it for yourself, how smooth it runs on your computer. Go ahead, go to our website. You can find the download link here uh, as well on this uh, live page here you can have the free trial for 30 days That's you can right. test all the features you can design whatever you want and you will see how smooth that runs okay. for you that is what we wanted to discuss today during this session thank you very much for the questions they are keeping the show much more relevant yeah. and uh, you already sort of gave us a sneak peek into what we are going to discuss next and you mentioned something about a new file format yeah can you tell us a little bit more about what that is? Yeah, well, I don't want to shut down the birds, but uh, for the for the next session, uh, it's an important thing. We will talk about the SketchUp uh, um, file format that you can uh, import into uh, Live. But more important, uh, most importantly, you can actually work in quite the same fashion as we did with Live. I mean, I mean Live and Archline XP, uh, because there's a new feature coming uh, to SketchUp as an extension. Uh, that allows live to directly communicate mm -hmm. with SketchUp in a sync uh, option, the same way as we did here. You will learn uh, in the next section how that works. So that is going to be uh, next Wednesday. Until, th until then, uh, thank you very much for your attendance and attention and questions. If uh, you have anything what we haven't answered, you know how to look out for us. Uh, if you like this show, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel so you're never going to miss another show like this one. And uh, until next time, uh, thank you very much for attending and happy designing. Thank you. Bye -bye. Goodbye.